All right, Warriors, welcome back. Let's do a breathing exercise. Five seconds. Five Mississippi, just to get us regulated again. Get us back in our path. You've been in your path. You've been in your path. But you, you've been operating like you're in the fucking battle zone on the front line 24-7. You need to learn to leave your armor, your suit of armor, the one you don, so that when you leave the house, you don't get absorbed by the matrix. In other words, you operate in the world, but you're not of the world. Because you got to survive, boo-boo. So what you got to learn to do is manage thyself, regulate thy, uh, thy, uh, thy own emotions. You feel me? <laughs> as funny as it sounds, it's a bitch, isn't it? Dang it, man. We're going to get you out of shoulda, coulda, woulda. We're definitely going to do that. But look, I'm going to serve up something gently. Narcissists, hear me out, hear me out. It's, whenever, this is how they use dating apps, yo. So like they'll text 15 connections, you know, new ones that still got the butterfly feelings, the love bomb stage, the honeymoon stage. And they send out a blanket text, right? Hey, who wants to come over? You know, not who. It's, hey, want to come over? Netflix and chill? And whoever bites on that is also going to be more inclined to also bring food. So get this. Hey, you want to chill in Netflix? Two out of ten will probably respond. Sounds like a good idea. The next text will be, I'm hungry. Can you bring something? Ha ha. So this is the eye opener for you. We're going to do the breathing exercise. I just want to take your breath away first. Your breath. Yeah, I said breath. <laughs> Check this out. These dating apps are being utilized by narcissists, men and women, like a Uber Eats with the chick or dude on the side. Do you understand me? It's like having Uber, Uber Eats and Pizzert. And a movie. Dang it, man. That's what you're diving into for you newbies. Let's do this. Let's, let, let's take a badass walk on the beach, but let's do this breathing exercise. Seriously, man. Let's, uh, as a loop interrupter, but also so that you understand what it feels like. Five seconds, us doing it together. Well, you can look over your shoulder. Hell, you could even cut a fart if you want. You're so alone watching this video. But when you're being provoked, I need you to understand how, it, how to self-regulate under duress. Because you're not going to be throwing your hands up, cocking your head back. Only I do that in front of folks. Because I'm just that shy. You don't need to be doing that shit. You might need to ball your fist up in your pocket or something so that you don't tense up here. Because part of that breathing exercise is regulating body language because the body don't lie just like an empath can look at someone's eyes and they don't lie so your curse is feeling others pain and lies it's a gift not a curse but because of that you're more aware of danger than you are of warriors around you because warriors pose no danger so they're invisible. You're so hypersensitive and so ready to posture defensively that you've been doing it 24 seven. Let's learn to take a break in that kingdom you created and defend. Time for you to enjoy it. Yes, the grass was greener on your side, but ain't nobody playing in it. Get your ass out there barefoot and enjoy this power you have. Just stop what the fuck you're doing. Look at me. Do you remember yourself, that pitiful fool who had no idea what the hell narcissist was? Can you imagine what else you got to learn? <laughs> For real? She signed me up. I'm all in. I'm I'm in. Let's do this. Five seconds. Come on. Release slowly. 
All right, shake that shit off, y'all. That harem closet is something else, isn't it? The harem closet is an Uber Eats with a side of chick. All you got to do is manifest. Manifest. <laughs> it's called network marketing. You ever heard that pitch? All right, that's what narcissists do. They're selling you that pitch. All right, let's keep this for real, though. Understand something. You ever heard the saying, real friends tell you the hard truths? But do you, I, I want you to understand, because narcissists play into this. They sometimes will tell you hard truths and, and candy coat, and what they're really doing is trying to show you your own faults in the mirror and hope it, it, it cripples you. So it's not done to motivate you. It's done intentionally to break you down. I need you to understand what the difference is because narcissists will mimic it and then tell you, well, friends just tell you the truth. Well, let me tell you, true friends, great friends, will rehearse it a hundred times in their head because what they're going to serve up is such a hard truth that they also stand to lose you as a great friend. So what they're going to do is rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it until it's perfect. And you're going to hear it in their voice, the sincerity, the delivery, the empathy, and the love. And you won't be able to mistake it. It's the kind of love that sets you straight. And with a tear in your fucking eye, you will embrace that brother. Hard truths served up eloquently and garnished with agape. Oh, you know the difference. There are a lot of fools out there running around acting like, oh, these are narcissists. They're sociopaths. They're psychopaths. They're this or that. Then, oh, everybody's a liar. Everybody. Well, if you know that then, and you know this, and you've been played multiple times and ain't learned, who's falling for all the lies? After a while, it's not a manipulation. You've just gotten accustomed to respect and disrespect. Because you've gotten accustomed to feel comfortable with knowing the devil in front of you. Then to have to learn anew. The fear of missing out. Oh, they're going to change for somebody else. Knowing full well. That at their best, they wouldn't make a pimple on a real warrior's ass. See, there comes a point where authenticity and believing in yourself to know you can do better will you come out of it. Once a narcissist shows you who the hell they are, they ain't no turning back. You got all the validation you need by them being themselves. There comes a point where you need to believe in you. One thing you can learn from narcissists is everybody's replaceable. In their world, everybody has to. Because once they get figured out, they get discarded. And the way they're able to mend their wounds, it's better for them to do it more first or fasterest. And create this victim mentality. Some of you stayed longer than you should have. Some of you are there where you don't need to be, where you're not even wanted. There's no maybes. What we have is a failure to launch. The reason this has to happen without assistance is because not everyone is going to make it. Not everyone's going to make that choice. But the ones that do realize I should have done it sooner as this because I've been living a more better bestest life. It's why we scream our war cry. The louderest. The most authentic. 
and it tastes good. Look, some of the crap I teach y'all in reverse narcology does not feel right, and I get that. It goes against your moral compass because you're not even used to shoving a little bit. What you're having to do is command the respect you fucking earned. Narcissists are dumbasses. They crown themselves. They want to command respect and invitations. Because they're so used to weak-ass empaths putting them on a pedestal where they're not even qualified to sit in. That reprobate mind gets rewarded and enabled. And the minute you show resistance and they know you're catching on, they'll jump their asses up off that throne and go find another one to sit on. Their job is to wake your asses up. Working for the devil doing God's work. Warriors, go to Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5 through 7. Because I want you to understand the message. I can screw it up and tell you in layman's terms what I feel and how I allow my moral compass to show me the right decisions. Because right and wrong must be contemplated. What the subconscious catches is authenticity and fake. Reality and bullshit. Right and wrong. You see, that's where we come into play. We have to joust with a four-year-old. This is how real friends operate. And I'll start at Proverbs chapter 27, verses 5 through 7. Verse 5. Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. Hmm. Six. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Seven. A satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb. But to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Now, let me read it this way. With fluidity. With the harmony. With the authenticity. And how it can be understood with a different impact. A different frame of mind, a different insight. Open rebuke is better than love, carefully concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. A satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb, but to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. When the lies taste better than the truths, Warriors learn to identify authenticity. You had to learn bullshittery and how the lie operates, how the lust demon operates, how the reprobate mind loves to reward themselves for work not performed. Wretched ass total losses. Dressed up like Ferraris. But got a four-stroke running. Operating like they are ribeye when they are two, two-day-old fucking hamburger. Hamburger meat. Warriors well, Ice Cube coin... Or, 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 I, I, I want to quote it. I saw it. I think it was a short... Had to been a short on, on the YouTube. He was being interviewed. This dude's letting the cat out the bag about Hollywood. So it was Mel Gibson. Uh, you've got uh, that actor who played Forrest Gump. 
Uh, you, you got a lot of heavy hitters now coming out. Matthew McConaughey. So uh, an ice cube came out, and I quote, If you're the one making the bullets and selling the band-aids, you're going to want to be at war. You're always going to want to be at war because it's profitable. He's talking about government here. But isn't that applicable to relationships? Narcissists creating chaos and then providing the solution? Wanting to be a white knight? It's like chunking the, the rock and hiding the hands. Putting a knife to your tire and coming to offer to change the flat. Warriors, to give you an idea about how overcompensating, how overcorrecting in society can go so wrong. Laws are now being reversed. Laws are actually now going to be enforced. And other states are following suit. Tennessee, the state of Tennessee, passed a, a house bill, House Bill number 2689, House Bill 2689 in Tennessee. Paternity fraud is a crime and punishable with prison time. So this is what I want to say. It has been used. It has been leveraged. And paternity fraud is not only leveraged in one state at a time, the same child can be leveraged in multiple states by multiple men when narcissists have a harem in different states. Now do you understand? If a third of all paternity tests, one third of all paternity tests done to date are not the baby daddy, Can you imagine when this house bill passes and all births in Tennessee will be required paternity tests before a signature can be executed on a birth certificate? So, warriors, there is pushback. Overcorrecting is being corrected. Accountability being placed where it needs to be. We're hearing about this because the resistance is losing. Hard-working men and women choosing to live right are tired of enabling incompetence, narcissism. This is what happens when enough is enough. Warriors, thanks for this badass walk on the beach. And look, uh, just to give you an idea, that scripture I looked up with you in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5 through 7, is worth you looking up on your own. Just because I read it aloud twice, just because I broke it down, it means nothing if you don't research it yourself. You see, I looked it up in 32 different translations. Because it's important for us to understand the character of the divine. The breathed message in order to understand with regard to who wrote it, whose mouth it came out of, matters not. What is the message? It doesn't matter if it sounds just like something that was out of the Quran, the Torah, the Septuagint. It doesn't matter if it almost sounds like a mirror image quote of the Emerald Tablets or the Epics of Gilgamesh. What matters is as a follower of one Creator, did you get the message? Or is it still a whisper? You want to beat ruminatious? Start chasing the truth 
and you can't help but walk in truth. You can't help but bluntly live in your truth and speak it. Narcissists are fully aware. And when you're doing it right, you will have some resistance. But you'll also have what narcissists call respect. Because they can't handle that kind of truth. It mortifies. Or as I like to say, mortificatious. Because it tastes more delicious to falling off the tongue. <laughs> Get out there and fucking own it, y'all. Y'all got it like that. Don't you allow narcissists to guilt you, to shame you, to insult you. The minute disrespect shows its face, believe it. If no one's look at handle it accordingly. I'm just saying. I ain't going to spell it out. Now get your asses out there and own it. You're living up to the standard. Look, we all human, ain't we? we look, come on. Come on, if no one's looking. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm gonna go to hell for that. I know. Woo! But look, I got so much more to answer for. Tim. Hmm. Temptatious. 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 Okay, I gotta let y'all go. Look, it's never goodbye. It's always until next time. Namaste. Oh, oh,